How's it going? Good, man. Good. How are you guys? Thanks for having me Good. on. No, no problem. Excited to talk to you, Ben. But uh, here with my special co-host, uh, DJ Rostar. For those who don't know, he was a big staple in the 2000 decade for the emo pop punk scene. For his live with DJ Rostar, he's interviewed My Chemical Romance, Fall Out Boy, Kate Perry, Foo Fighters, and so much more. I'm so glad to be joined by you. Ross, how you doing? How's Nashville treating you right now? Everything is good here. And on my list of interviews, Armor for Sleep, they've done the show a few times. So I'm excited yeah, that they're back here talking to us it's, today. It's been a minute, maybe uh, at least a decade, possibly. Uh, it but. could be even more. <laughs> Yeah, but, uh, probably is. <laughs> we, Steve and I have teamed up where we do a bunch of interviews now for his YouTube channel. And, and I like to call them throwback interviews, but exactly. not necessarily just throwback because you have work, you know, you have music and you have stuff going on. So more like a, like a catch up, I guess you'd call it. Catching up with like old guests that I really liked. And so I'm happy to have you back here. Thanks, well, I, I assumed Ross, you interviewed him back during the what to do when you're dead kind of period, which is kind of celebrating his 15th anniversary now. And I guess you guys are doing a couple tour dates coming up for that, huh? Yeah, um, it's it, it. I think it started off as a couple tour dates and then somehow it turned into 22 shows. Um, oh, it's made so, more now. Okay, cool. Yeah. So um, <laughs> they just kind of kept being added. Um and obviously, um, I don't know if you guys know, but there was this little um, like virus that came around um, like a year and a half ago. Yeah, it's still around, unfortunately. <laughs> it is. I don't know. what. I have no clue what you're talking about. But okay. Continue. Yeah. All right. I'll, I'll fill you in later. Um, but yeah, so we were this, this thing was supposed to happen like a year and a half ago, and it's finally happening now um, in the fall. And um, I'm just I'm stoked about it you know I'm sure everyone that's able to play shows now is just really excited that we're able to uh you know come together again now you did this tour six years ago to celebrate the 10-year anniversary so what are you going to be doing differently this time if anything live show um so one thing that happened five years ago was that it, we only played like a couple shows it was like kind of like a very like small affair um and I think since then there's just kind of been this growing um resurgence of I guess like an appreciation for that scene of music um for some yeah. reason like it doesn't want to go away and like um you know I, I just think as people move through their lives and appreciate um you know I guess the genre of music that affected them at a certain point it, it just kind of like keeps growing um so we kind of uh you know, instead of turning away from that, we wanted to honor that. So, I mean, something that we did is we put out like a deluxe um, double vinyl version of What to Do When You Were Dead, which is the album that we're touring on with a bunch of like B-sides and old demos from the album. So it's just kind of like a celebration of us being like, okay, fine. Like we'll put out like a bunch of other stuff uh, surrounding that record. And um, and also, I mean, it's, it's amazing for us too that people have been listening uh, throughout the years. Um, you know, it seems like even more so now than six years ago, um, just based on like, you know, the shows that we're playing. So uh, it's, it's just been, it's really, it's been really cool. Yeah. Well, How are you, oh, sorry, Steve, you go. Oh yeah, go ahead. Uh, I was going to say that uh, Bass Bed Ghost Singing was always one of my favorites. And also, I think it was Sick, last man. summer, I think you did like a, like an Unplug kind of, yeah. Thing you got to release. So T talk about yeah, Equal Vision. That song. Yeah, Equal Vision Records, who put out What to Do When You're Dead and our first album, Dream to Make Believe, um, they kind of, they, they did a compilation right when everyone went into lockdown, um, kind of as, I, I know they had a bunch of artists that were hoping to go on tour and then they had to stay home. So they wanted to do an album to like help their artists kind of like pay for stuff. Um, and I was like, I don't, want any money but like I will gladly like be a part of this um album and, and the whole point of the album was for the bands to do kind of like acoustic renditions or reimaginations of old songs so I did uh, an acoustic version of Basement Ghost Singing and I was obviously locked down and in quarantine just like everyone else so it was actually really nice for me to give me something to do for you know four hours yeah. um but yeah you can check that out on uh, Equal Vision's website. I think it's called the Safe and Sound compilation. Are you going to do an acoustic part of the show when you go out on tour? Um, I don't think so. I mean, there's definitely going to be some uh, interesting moments. But I don't think necessarily I'll bust out an acoustic guitar. 
but I might get weird with an electric guitar. So when you play these shows, after you're done playing the record in full, do you play anything else? Are you going to play some of the B-sides or some of the first record or even maybe some of your solo stuff? Yeah, uh, uh, definitely. <laughs> probably not that. Um, okay. But yeah, so this is like a What to Do When You're Dead anniversary tour. So pretty much, um, you know, obviously it's expected we're going to play the whole album. I think I think most shows we're going to do the whole album um, front to back, although there are a couple markets where we're playing two shows. And I think maybe for like the second show in some markets, for instance, we're playing Irving Plaza in addition to Gramercy um, in New York, and we're playing El Rey in addition to Troubadour in L.A. So I think for those secondary shows, we might do something more interesting with the album. But yeah, like once we're done playing with the album, that's only like 40, 45 minutes. So if people want to stick around, obviously, um, yeah, we'll probably bust out um, like our other favorite songs from our catalog. I actually like I've been asking our fans on Instagram, like what they would want to hear. So kind of taking stock of like songs that people might want to hear and um, it'll definitely be a hodgepodge. I don't know if any of my solo stuff will make the cut. I don't think my band would be too stoked about that because that was just like a separate entity, but maybe, is, I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll propose is, the idea. And so Nash has to do double duty on this tour. His band will be opening up, right? That's true, yeah. On the um, on the East Coast dates, his his uh, his band, the Cold Seas, who are awesome. They're like a very like um, spacey, smashing pumpkins, like super good though, really good. Yeah, they'll be playing on the East Coast, so oh. he's gonna have to do two sets at once. Um, so check it out, uh, Cold Seas. That's the cold seas, yeah. Nice. Are you worried about his hands by the time it gets to be your set? <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, as soon as he's done playing with the cold seas, I'm gonna make sure he takes a nap backstage. We'll clear out, we'll clear out the dressing room. Uh, yeah, we'll give him a little a cozy, little sleeping environment so he'll be well rested for our set. Yeah. Gotcha. How have you been able to do band practice? Have you had to fly back to New Jersey? Do the other three guys live in the same area still, or are you all scattered across yes. America? Yeah, so I live in LA now. I'm actually flying home um, today. The date is August 2nd. So I'm flying home on August 8th, um, and we're just going to start rehearsals then. And our first show in Texas, in Houston, I believe is August 26th or something. Yeah, 27th, August 27th. Yeah. yeah, that's what Torah kicked off. <laughs> And actually, and you get there on time, right? right where I'm at on the December 12th. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, DC, yeah, it's uh, there you like... got some VIP um, upgrades for people who don't have tickets yet. Uh, one of them is like a meet and greet photo op. Um, mm -hmm. Is there going to be through, people through, gonna have to wear masks and stuff for this, or? <laughs> Dude, that that is a new world that we we will um, we'll figure out based on the markets and what the yeah. venues want. Um, I will, I will do whatever. I mean, I'm fully vaccinated and I'm one of those yeah. people who was fully vaccinated and a month and a half ago, I got COVID. It was like not a bad case at all. But so I'm like, I'm completely immune, but like that doesn't like, I'll wear a mask if we should be wearing Sometimes masks. Sometimes they have these like, um, some B degrees so I've gone to, they just have like a clear kind of plexiglass so you're separated, but you can still have Oh my God, are you serious? Yeah. I was, I was, I was That's awesome. It's hard to that. talk to each other, but at least it's cool. I mean, I went to a wrestling thing at AEW and uh, I got to meet Orange Cassidy that way, so. But, but like yeah. behind a plexiglass? He was behind a plexiglass and I was just standing <laughs> yeah. in front of him. So I mean, of, like, we're together. Whatever. But we you know? I, I mean, I guess that's how I've checked out at CVS for the past year and a half. They're behind, exactly. You know, yeah. things. Like here's my really CVS like card. That? Wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's wild. I mean, I'm in, I'm in LA and I feel like tons of checkout places. I've been talking to people through plexiglass. I mean, it would be, that would be weird to meet our fans like that. Oh, yeah. Um, but... <laughs> At There's the same time, it's just a mask. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, I got to ask you, Ben, this might be a weird question. So you stopped actively okay. doing Armor for Sleep a long time ago, and you've worked on other things. But have you, as a songwriter, always been writing, even just for yourself this whole time? Or are you actually, mm -hmm. like, over music for the most part? Um, I was for a while. I was really, like... Um, just kind of jaded about the whole, uh, you know, I guess from my personal experience, it was kind of jarring because, you know, when I made the Armor for Sleep demo, I was 17 years old. And I basically, 
the first album we did, Anthony and I, the bass player, were in LA recording it when I was 18. And then like, as soon as we got home, we got Nash and PJ in the band and started touring when I was 18 years old. So my early twenties were through that kind of like fucked up cycle. So I think I just, uh, I needed a minute um, to be like a normal human, um, but yeah. I've been um, definitely working on stuff. So um, I think I think I've come to a point now where like I'm cool with not feeling the pressure of like the music industry because I'm just not there anymore. Like I don't obviously like things like TRL and things like that aren't a thing anymore, and I don't have that like hunger as like I did when I was a 20 year old kid to like want all the other things that came along with it where like mm -hmm. if something happened now it would just be like for the sake of the music and wanting to put out stuff in the world so I think I'm I think I'm rounding the bend in that way um so. you're making a personal comeback I mean a person no I, I mean I think the thing that I've done that has been, uh, I guess, like um, absorbed by the most amount of people in a meaningful way has been through Armor for Sleep and through kind of yeah. like what we've built. Um, so I'm, I'm not sure like I necessarily would want to do something as like a solo thingy. Um, yeah. But we'll see. Um, the other three guys, are they more active in music than you are, would you say, or not as much at all either? Um, I mean, you know. Well, Nash has his band, he said. Yeah, Nash has his band. He's doing his thing. Um, the other two guys, Anthony and PJ, they're doing their thing in New Jersey. I wouldn't say they're any more or less into it. Um, but yeah, next year will be will be interesting, I think. Mm, so. Okay, I like that. Cool. cool. Maybe a new um, album guys... or something down the road, maybe you can tease, or you don't know yet. I mean, um, Maybe, who knows? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Has it been fun and or you know easy to stay friends with the three guys? Maybe even more so now that you're not touring and seeing each other every second. Is it easier? Um for sure. Yeah. You know, uh, I mean, those guys are like my brothers, and I feel like I mean, I've never been in the in the military and I have a huge respect for anybody that has um, and I'm not trying to say that this is any similarity because I don't know that experience but being in a band on tour in your early 20s it almost did feel like like what we went through together was just something that I imagine you know people in the military share with each other like my our experiences together were just so insane as like 20 year old kids driving through truck stops and playing shows in random states and people singing along to like our weird band songs like yeah so I think our shared experience I think has just always been something that as we get older and go through life is just something that's going to connect us it's like gotcha I don't know it's like that Stephen King movie it where like as kids they had that experience and like 20 years down the line like they'll call each other and they'll be yeah. like that's you know right. where to meet you know what I mean like yeah that's kind of that's kind of how I feel like that's just how it's going to be with us um yeah. so it's a really strong connection no matter like obviously I'm in LA and they're all in New Jersey so we're not like jamming every day um but that connection is always there yeah and what we built together is there so do you have any like fun stories from those crazy times when you're like 18 to 21, you know, touring and stuff? Or were there any venues where you had to play and then leave because you weren't 21 or anything like that? You know, like <laughs> Oh, for sure. Yeah. Um, I mean, there are some stories I can talk about uh, <laughs> and some that <laughs> uh, I probably can talk about. It's best to leave record, up to the imagination, the other ones, huh? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think what's, um, we had some funny early stories. Like I think, a story that I think about is um, when we were, when we didn't have our first album out and we were nobody, we actually, we had a couple people in our corner, like booking agents and um, uh, people like that who wanted to put us on shows, but I don't think they necessarily knew what shows to like really put us on, but they were like, oh, but you know, Armor for Sleep is going to be a cool band one day. So I remember really early on before we had anything out, whatever booking agent we had was able to get us on a show at the, um, what venue was it uh the trocadero um which was in philly, philly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, oh, no, no. philadelphia oh the philadelphia yeah. one yeah yeah. yeah yeah 
and it was opening up for um, Boy Sets Fire and Kill Switch Engage. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Boy Sets Fire, still, that takes me back. Yeah, yeah, totally. Are they still um, around? Fully, I don't know. Yeah, definitely. Not, kill I, I definitely never seen them a lot back in that 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 time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they were awesome. I love Boy yeah. Sets Fire, but Kill Switch. You know, it was a completely sold out show of like kill switch fans who are like hardcore metal fans and yeah. we were so bad at the time and obviously such a different style of music so someone was heckling me and i didn't know what to do so i offered him to literally come like walk on stage and like fight me in front of <laughs> two thousand people did he, um, did he do it no he didn't do it he was like no ah! you're cool bro whatever oh, but man. i got off when we got off stage well i remember boys that's fire and kill switch engage like just ran up to me and gave me a hug and we're like that was amazing and then i remember that was just a moment that clicked in my head like okay there are bands of like all different sounds that can kind of play together and just want yeah you know to embrace each other um so i think that was in like in terms of like uh memorable tour stories i think i'll well, always remember that well, that's why i loved about yeah. van's warp tour it was always i mean obviously it was mostly a, a punk run but you had kill social engage tour and a lot of the metal hardcore mm -hmm. you know indie pop punk bands you know yeah yeah, I'll give you one. Crazy too. I'll, I'll give you one more question, Ben, and then I'll let you go. Um, cool. So I'm gonna. This will be a deep dive. So everybody who's a fan of the band has their own favorite song. Do you have mm. the one that you're most proud of, of your own work? Oh man, that's so tough because I feel like if I do that, um, man, my you most know, favorite song. Like if someone said, "Hey, I've never heard of your band. Like, what, what, what's the, what's the one song you think is like the best one? Like, what would you tell them?" Hmm. Uh. Actually, I, I like, I like, I would say the last song on "What to Do When You Are Dead," which is called "The End of a Fraud," which was kind of like a very clear and obvious nod to like a Pink Floyd, um, "Dark Side of the Moon" thing. Um, we just kind of went nuts. We had this um, female gospel singer come in at the end. And um, at the end of the song, I think in the studio, Nash was actually like throwing his drums in the air and we were miking up the sounds of like his drums breaking on wow. the ground. Oh, wow. Um, <laughs> so that was just the first time that I was like, you know what, like fuck normal recording. And like, we're just gonna do something that like is just fun and, um, you know, it was, a, it was a big moment. So I, I, I personally really like the song, but I also just like that it re represents a moment to me in recording where I'm like, you know what, like there's like, why not just do shit that makes you like stoked, you know, above all else. Awesome, man. Well, thanks for joining us. If you guys want to get tickets or look at the tour dates, it's armorforsleep.com. Yeah, tour yes, it is, yeah. August 27th in Houston, runs through December 12th in Orlando. They play in New York, Boston, Baltimore, LA, Nashville. You can go to the full yeah. tickets there. And then there's VIP upgrades for meet and greets. You can even request songs during the sound check. So that's exciting. Yeah, man. We'll, ca we'll catch up in 10 more years, Ben, okay? <laughs> yeah, all right. See you in 10 years, man. Thanks for joining all us. Right. Thank you so Thanks, much, guys. Man. Appreciate it. All right.